Do you have a technical DevOps interview coming up? Are you wondering what questions the interviewer may ask? Do you even know why they're asking those questions? Hi, my name is Jarrett Coggin. I'm a DevOps engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've interviewed hundreds of DevOps candidates for a variety of positions, both as my fellow colleagues and also for people who would report to me. In this video, I want to discuss five DevOps engineer questions that I've asked in interviews. I want to discuss the reasoning and rationale behind those questions so you have the best shot at acing the interview. Let's start with the first question that I typically ask candidates. What does DevOps mean to you? With this question, I'm trying to understand if the candidate understands the culture of DevOps, what DevOps is trying to achieve. How does the candidate imagine DevOps fitting within an organization? What do they imagine the kind of roles, responsibilities, objectives of DevOps in general? Not necessarily what a DevOps engineer would do, but what a company that's in trying to instill a culture of DevOps is trying to achieve. They might be going after things like automation, uh, both from like an infrastructure perspective, as well as implementing like CIC pipelines and speeding up the build, deployment, and release processes. They might be trying to improve application reliability. They might be trying to get a better sense of how their applications are performing in production so they can proactively address scalability challenges and get ahead of potential issues that may creep up in the future. This is the next question. What is a CI CD pipeline and why is it important for a team to implement? This question gets at the heart of process and improvement and automation. And so what I'm really trying to look at here is does a candidate understand the way a change goes or an idea goes from a commit to a repository all the way out to production? Can they accurately and concisely explain each phase of a CI CD pipeline and the goals and objectives of that phase. If they can also explain the tools that they might use to implement the CI CD pipeline, the entire pipeline end to end, as well as the tools in each phase, that's really a really good sign. So we might say like Jenkins is used to facilitate the entire CI CD pipeline. And then if they can talk about the individual phases within that CI CD pipeline, your build phase, validation phase, your deployment phase, your release phase, maybe variations on that theme. And they can talk about the specific objectives of each one of those phases. That's a really good sign. It helps me understand that the candidate knows one of the main things that they would be brought in to an organization to achieve. If they're being brought into a larger organization, the fact that they can still adequately explain what that CIC pipeline is a really good thing. Depending on what type of team they get dropped on, whether it's more of a platform engineering style, we're offering up a tool as a service to a big company, or if they're being dropped in as like a internal consultant, if you will, to help instill a culture of DevOps into a team, those are really good signs because they can kind of play both fields potentially. Now, the last part of this I think is really important is we can then dig in and say, okay, you talked about this pipeline, tell me how you would implement this, or how would you investigate how a team is performing to implement a CI CD pipeline or to improve their existing processes around building and deploying and releasing applications out to production? The final thing I might touch on is how would you build a CI CD pipeline for different types of releases? Maybe we're talking about infrastructure changes, operating system or framework patches, database schemas, maybe config changes, or simply application code changes. These are all fair game in this question. The third question is outside of CI CD pipelines, what are other responsibilities of a DevOps engineer? Now this question helps me understand whether the candidate has a good sense of the common areas that a DevOps engineer works in. I mentioned infrastructure automation. I mentioned CI CD pipelines. I've mentioned potentially being a DevOps advocate within an organization. These are all other areas that DevOps engineer might uh, kind of contribute in, but really, the things that I see DevOps engineers most often work on fall under a few different buckets. CI CD pipelines for improving the build deployment release process. You have your infrastructure automation, which is more around improving the way that we manage the servers, maybe VMs, maybe bare metal, maybe it's cloud infrastructure even. Managing the servers the application runs on top of if it's not running on top of a like container orchestration platform like Kubernetes. Third bit that I often see DevOps engineers help with, logging, monitoring, and observability. 
a reliability type workload. And so what we're looking for here is do you understand how to take the logs, the metrics, the traces from applications, move them into an observability tool like Datadog or Splunk? Do you know how to turn that into usable feedback for a software development team or for an operations team? And can you really help glue these things all together? And that's really what I'm thinking about with a lot of DevOps engineering roles. We are the glue in an organization that helps it move a whole lot faster. This next question is one of my favorite questions to ask. What is insert tool here? And now that tool could be anything. It could be Jenkins, it could be Terraform, it could be Ansible. It could be any tool that's kind of used in the DevOps uh, area, if you will. The other follow-up question that I ask to this, what are the pros, the cons? When would you, you choose this tool over another tool? When would you choose an alternative to this tool? And how does it fit in the overall DevOps space? What this really tells me is, how does a candidate think about choosing a tool? How does a candidate know when to pick one thing over another? And can they give me examples when they have had to make that choice? Or at the very least, do they know what other tools exist in the overall tech tool space? And we could be talking about Jenkins versus a hosted alternative like GitHub Actions. And so if I was talking to a candidate about this, we might say like, oh, we're going to use Jenkins because it doesn't have a huge fee. It, it's open source and, and so it's free and you just install it on a server and get up and running with it. On top of that, there are many candidates in or many DevOps engineers out there that have Jenkins experience. Whereas we might flip the script and say, why would you use GitHub Actions over Jenkins? You don't have to manage the infrastructure. All of the configuration for your CIC pipelines is code and it has to be code in order for it to work in GitHub Actions. So really, whenever I ask what is insert tool and ask these types of questions, I'm really trying to get at the heart of, do they understand the tools in the DevOps landscape, if you will? And can they tell me a pros and cons analysis? And at the end of the day, what would they like to choose to work with? The final question I wanted to talk about, what type of release processes have you been a part of and how have you improved those processes? The reason why I ask this question is it helps me understand what type of DevOps engineering roles have they contributed to in the past. I found that there are two main types of roles that DevOps engineers often fall into. Team embedded DevOps engineer and the more platform engineering focused DevOps engineer. And what I mean by this is a team embedded DevOps engineer will often talk very concretely around the tasks they were doing, being a part of a specific software engineering team or organization. How were they contributing to that team's CI CD system, that team's infrastructure automation, that team's logging, monitoring, observability? Were they contributing to the actual release cycle? Were they doing work as part of the team's scrum process or the, whatever agile process they were following? Flip the other side of it, and we were talking about the more platform engineering focused DevOps engineer. But what this type of DevOps engineer, if you will, uh, has done is they've more offered up tools for a lot of teams within an organization to consume. And so what I mean by that is they might have been part of a team that offered up a CI CD tool like Jenkins, a logging monitor monitoring and observability tool like Splunk, and they're serving up those tools that they host internally. And so what this gets at, if they were detached from a team's release process, they may not have really been involved in a lot of the releases. And so they may not know what friction team or organization is facing. And so they may not have concrete evidence of how they've improved things. They may have just said, here's the tools that we offer. It's up to you to leverage them effectively. Whenever we talk about the first one, the team embedded DevOps engineer, they might not have as much experience scaling up an organization. The latter, the more platform engineering focused DevOps engineer may not have as much experience actually improving a team's processes. Whenever I ask the second half of this question, how have you improved those release processes? I'm trying to understand how the DevOps engineer has made concrete usable improvements to a given team? How have they actually improved that team's software development experience? How have they improved the overall software development lifecycle for that team or that organization? Can they point to specific things 
that they have done, improvements they made, if they can say, hey, we cut down deployment times by 60%, we improved our build times by 50%, standardized the process so that the, it, the process would scale out across not just one team, but five teams or, or 10 teams. We went from being able to handle 10 applications on this CI CD tool we we're using like Jenkins to 200. If they can point to things like that, then we can dig into the meat and bones of this and we can really have a fruitful conversation. I can really understand the types of projects this person has, has worked on. Make sure you check out the description of the video where I have all of these questions written out in addition to other questions that I like to ask in DevOps engineering interviews. Like the comment if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna hear more about what I have to say about DevOps and AWS. Leave a comment in this video about interview questions that you've encountered for DevOps engineering positions specifically. Finally, follow me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash IN slash Jarrett Coggin. Or stick around and watch my next video about what I think DevOps is.